I've been working with Drio for a few sponsored videos and they were keen on me trying out their new Chef Maker air fryer. And I'm like, hey, I don't have a cooking channel, but uh, they sent me two of those units anyways and playing around with it, it's quite an interesting gadget. So I'm making a video about it anyways. It's got a drawer for holding the food stuff with uh, a tray for holding the food a bit higher and this one for holding it lower. And this temperature probe which gets used for a lot of recipes. And then inside we have a big 1600 watt heating element with a fan blade straight behind it, a light and this little thing in the corner which is a nozzle for squirting in water. There's a little uh, water reservoir on the top here which fortunately I remembered to empty before I tilted this thing. And 1600 watts is an awful lot of heat for such a small cooking area, but the whole idea, I guess, is to have heat so intense that it's like frying, and the fan kind of spreads the air around to spread the heat more evenly. And this wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't at least try to measure stuff. So I got myself a Raspberry Pi computer and a thermocouple amplifier that goes to the thermocouple, which can take the heat. I've actually baked this one a few times already, which is why it's a bit brown, and I had to strip the wire a bit so it fits in the slot in the drawer here. So I'll make sure the probe is kind of in the middle here and we'll select a uh, classic cook where you just set the temperature. Uh, air fry 380 seems good and go. So it took me uh, two takes to take that which is why there's this thing here and you see the temperature is rising rapidly. I'm using Fahrenheit in this case because uh, all of our recipes are in Fahrenheit and you can see every time it takes a reading at five seconds the temperature shot up by oh at least 10 Fahrenheit and we're at maybe two and a half minutes in and we're at 360 Fahrenheit so this thing heats up really fast it's also using 1600 watts and now my thermocouple is reading 400 uh, I'm not sure how accurate that is but the Drio's cut power already so basically it's reached a set point so it's cycling on and off with about a minute and a half cycle maybe 50% duty cycle, so a lot faster cycling than a typical oven or something like that. And because this thing is maybe a bit like a toaster oven, I thought I'd try the toaster oven for comparison. So the toaster is using a bit less power, just 1200 watts. And at about three and a half minutes in, we're at 398. So not as fast as the drill, but not too bad in terms of heating up. And the outside of this thing is way, way hot. Uh, my hand in comparison looks really cold compared to the door. And this is stainless steel, which is actually infrared reflective. So it's not even showing how hot it really is. And the front door is actually hot enough that the water just evaporates straight off of it. But now for maintaining temperature, this seems to actually be using less electricity than the air fryer. Even though this thing is getting really hot on the outside, Whereas this thing doesn't, but this thing is always blowing somewhere out the back, so I think a lot of heat is lost that way. So let's try cooking something with it. I want to try making some french fries with it. This might be a bit too much potato in there, but uh, let's give it a try. So I'll use chef mode, and we'll have to go down to vegetables. Mostly it's for meats. And potato chunks is the closest they've got for french fries, so I'll just go with that program. Uh, and it gives me instructions for what to do and let's just go. So five minutes into the cooking cycle these are starting to look a little bit dry I think they'll take the oil much better now than they would have initially. At 12 minutes in we're starting to see some sizzle and some color on these fries. Ah, these don't look too bad. They're not as cooked on the bottom, but I think it's because I put too many in there. And I think I'll add a little bit more oil to them. Not bad, actually. Uh, this isn't my first time making fries with this thing. The first time I made fries, I gave some to the kids and they just ate them right up and then I had to make some more. I had in the past stirred them up part way through the cycle because some of these aren't as brown as some of the other ones. This was on the bottom. It's well cooked, but just not as brown. 
But I was thinking, you know, I could just do this in the toaster oven, but uh, you can't just have stuff dribbling down on here, so you have to put the fries in the tray. And then I put this thing on broil, and it just took a very long time. And when I tried this, uh, it was getting close to supper time, and they just wouldn't finish. And before I could experiment some more, Rachel had lost patience and took the potatoes out and just put them in a frying pan and finished them off, so I don't know how long it would have taken. Let's try some shrimp. Seafood. Oh, and there's shrimp. Okay, go. Oh, and I need to put some water in the top here. So there's five minutes left in the cycle. I think I'll add a little bit of oil to them because normally when we fry these up, they have oil on them, and I think that probably will make them a little bit yummier. So what do these taste like? Well. A little bit freezer burned because they've been in the freezer for a very long time because cooking a small batch of shrimp is just too much of a hassle and I'm the only one in our family that actually likes shrimp and so I just haven't bothered but uh, with this gadget I think I would do it more often though I probably won't buy any more shrimp. So maybe this thing is sort of a bachelor cooking contraption uh, certainly I would have appreciated one of those very much when I was still single and so I decided to give the other one of those that I got to my brother-in-law who is single and we're trying to encourage him to cook a little bit more. And on that front, I've also used this thing to warm up stuff like uh, pizza or fries that just don't come out right warm up in a microwave. So great for that and faster than the toaster oven. We also did a salmon steak with it uh, using the probe and that came out just right, uh, no messing with it. Although it did take twice as long as doing it in a frying pan. And after that, a rack of lamb, which we had to cut into pieces to make it fit. And there was no rack of lamb mode, so we used the uh, lamb chops program. But that came out just perfectly. Nice, even brown on all sides. And at that point, uh, Rachel really got sold on using this thing, whereas before, she was just being patient with me, wanting to just experiment with it with different foods. So we've been late setting up the barbecue this year because Stuff that we would normally put on the barbecue, we just put in the air fryer and you know, just push the button and go. No turning it or monitoring it, just does it on its own. But the uh, coolest feature to me is the grease that the barbecue normally turns into smoke and a mess in the barbecue. On this thing gets caught in a tray and I can just pour that grease on rice or vegetables later to add flavor because that grease is the best grease. But when I tried cooking pre-made hamburger patties using the hamburger setting on the Chef Maker, they came out super consistent, but uh, that's not actually what I want. I like my hamburgers to be almost blackened on the outside and only moderately cooked on the inside, so it wasn't ideal. I tried again setting the Chef Maker to maximum heat and preheating and putting them in there, and that came out a bit better. I think with thicker hamburger powders it would have been okay, but I have to say for the frozen hamburger patties that we buy, I think the barbecue still does a better job. Now part of me thinks, uh, was it really necessary to put a smartphone sized display in there just to uh, have different recipes stored in there? But there's actually a lot more to it than just a uh, time and temperature for these things because the temperature varies through the cooking cycle. It starts out with high heat just to get things going, then uses moderate heat to achieve doneness throughout the meat and then usually followed by very high heat at the end to sort of sear the surface and give it that nice color. It also sprays water in there that comes from this little tray here uh, to keep the food from drying out too much and also of course it monitors the food with the cooking probe to make sure it's done throughout. So this chef mode with its built-in programs is really nice because you just put the food in, tell it what it is and tell it to do its thing and it just cooks it really nice. And if the thing you're cooking isn't on chef mode, I just pick the closest thing to it and usually that works out really well too. So this thing is way more sophisticated than our simple old toaster oven, but uh, I got this one 15 years ago. It wasn't expensive, it's mostly made out of metal and it's probably still good for another 15 years, so there is something to be said for simple and old. So uh, sorry for being kind of a shell about this product, but I should remind you this is a sponsored video, so yes indeed, I am being a shill right now, but uh, I have really liked this product because so many uh, things like meat, you just put them in there and let it do its thing and it comes out really nice, so it really makes some cooking a lot easier. And there is a Kickstarter for this thing launching today, and if you pre-order today, you can get 45% off the price. 
There's also an early bird discount up until the beginning of July when the product officially launches and ships.